Welcome back to the channel. I am not Wolverine. Today we are going over all of the stabby things that we use to make wood carvings. I have promised you guys a video for a little bit on knives and uh, on other wood carving tools, but today we're just going to talk about knives and hopefully later this week we'll go over other wood carving tools, but knives right now. I am not a wood carving expert. I am an enthusiastic amateur. So the knowledge I have is based on that. If you have less knowledge than I am, this is going to be a very valuable video to you because we're going to go over different types of bevels, handle styles, different types of wood carving knives that are out there and places you can get them from. And if you are more knowledgeable than I am, but you're anything like me, this is going to be a very valuable video to you as well, because if you're like me, you like to hear the thoughts of someone when they're, uh, when they're well prepared and well thought out. And I've been thinking about this video for a while, thinking about how I want to say this and what I want to say. So this is probably going to still have some value to you. Now, before we get too deep into this, I want to go over some very general blade characteristics that are going to help us out. First off, not all knives are created equal, right? Some knives have a straight profile here for cutting. This is a straight, flat cutting profile. Other knives have a curved cutting profile. We call them upsweep blades. So this one is an upsweep right here, right? And I have this one, like this Mora here, it's an upsweep blade. So it's curved up. But the difference between these two blades here is one has a convex grind and this one has a Scandi grind. So they're different in that aspect. But this one, is a straight blade with a scandy grind. So I got a straight blade with a scandy grind, a Sloyd style upsweep blade with a scandy grind, and then here's an upsweep blade with a convex grind. So let's break this down a bit farther, right? And let's first talk about the blade grind. Now, real quick, there are three types of grinds that we're going to concern ourselves with for our wood carving knives. Now, you'll see the knee overlay right here. There are way more knife grinds than this micro bevels or, or hollow bevels or so many knife grinds that are out there that we can't concern ourselves with otherwise we will never finish this video because i believe that every knife maker who ever lived may have decided to make his own knife grind and then start making knives with that knife grind because he thought that was better but for wood carving these are the three you're going to see these are the three you're going to see all the time and these are the most popular right and those are the flat grind the convex grind and the Scandi grind. And the Scandi grind is the one you probably heard of the most, right? It's the one you see on a Sloyd knife, the, uh, the Beavercraft Sloyd, the big upsweep ed up edge. You can see the grind right there on that. But let's take a look at them on the table and we'll get into that more in depth. I just wanna make sure I go over those three grinds. These are the only three we're gonna concern ourselves with, nothing else. Okay, now with the Scandi grind, you have a flat spine and then it comes down at a sharp angle, right? And that sharp angle is one flat grind. So it's not a flat grind knife because a flat grind knife is flat from the spine all the way down to the blade. And an example of a flat grind knife is like this OCC tools knife. And it is a flat grind, a single plane from the spine all the way to the blade, which makes it very easy to sharpen, right? But we'll go over that in a minute. Scandi grind knives are the same concept. It just starts halfway down the blade which gives it a bit more sheer of an angle. You see right there on that. And it's the same way with this upsweep one, this Mora. Here's an up close view of that Mora knife and that Scandi or Scandinavian style grind. You can see it's got that thick spine that's flat part of the way down. And then along the curvature of the blade, you've got that sheer angle, that grind coming down. A Scandi knife can be easy to strop because you lay the blade flat and then just rotate it up to that cutting edge. So you can see there's a little dark line of shadow underneath that back of the spine there as I'm bringing that blade down to the leather. <clears throat> the difficulty with some of these knives, if you look on this more knife, you'll see that the tip, there's a shadow underneath it because the tip isn't touching all the way down on an upsweep blade like this. So an upsweep blade is more difficult to strop than a regular knife, but a Scandi grind is easy to strop because it's easy to index where that blade is and where that cutting edge is on the strop itself. <clears throat> they are relatively easy to sharpen on a straight blade. On an upsweep blade, you get into a little bit more difficulty when it comes to stropping them or sharpening them because you lay it flat on a strop. I need to do a bit of a different maneuver here for an upsweep blade as I come down I rotate up in a way like so to get that whole surface stropped. And so you wind up doing this motion where you 
where you come towards yourself and then angle it upwards and bring it up to get the whole surface. It's a more difficult knife to strop to get done right. You can do it and you can learn it, but for a newer carver, this is a more difficult process to learn. My first knife was a Beavercraft Sloyd that I have right here. And I did not have much success with keeping a Sloyd style Scandi grind knife sharp. I did not have much success at all. And I almost quit carving because of how difficult it was for me as a new carver without much experience and without many people helping me out to learn how to strop this knife. So that's the basics on a Scandi grind and a PSA in the learning curve that comes with an upsweep. A flat grind, we'll go over next, are like these OCC tool knives. These are very easy to maintain because as I said a moment ago, it's a flat grind from the spine all the way down to the tip, right? It's easier to see that grind from this angle and you can see the way the light reflects off of it. That's just one smooth flat surface all the way down from the spine of the blade down to the cutting edge. And when you lay this flat on the surface, of your strop to strop the blade, you just push it down and you can start stropping right away. There is no shadow underneath the spine of the blade because the entire surface of the blade is meeting the strop at all points across that blade. Easy to strop, easy to maintain. It's hard to not index this properly. Now, convex grind. A good convex grind is one that <clears throat> starts the spine and then is a slow curve speeding up as it goes inwards or getting more sheer as it goes inward. This is a heavy knife here with a convex blade. And as the light reflects off it, you can see it moves down it along that curvature of the blade from the spine down to the cutting edge. That makes it a little bit more difficult, a little more challenging to strop correctly because you can't just lay this flat on a stropping surface and strop the entire length of this blade. Now you only need to be stropping the cutting edge. So when we go to lay this flat, we can see we're gonna have a little bit of a shadow underneath the spine of the blade as we rotate up to find that blade edge. So we got three knife grinds, right? The benefits and pros and cons. The Scandi grind is great because it's durable, it's long lasting, and it's relatively easy to strop. It's not as easy to strop as a flat grind, but it's far easier than a, than a convex grind, right? Um, <clears throat> the nice thing about the Scandi grind too is that because the spine is so much thicker going down towards the blade, it's going to be more durable because the thickness of that cutting edge, it, it's got more meat behind it. So it's not going to dull as quickly and it's not going to chip as often. On the other hand, the flat grind, while it's much easier to strop, you, you just lay it flat down on your strop and start sliding and it's easy to align that blade and index it properly every time. The issue is that because it's so thin, it's going to dull a little bit faster and it's gonna chip a little bit more often than a Scandi grind. The concave grind that you get is kind of the best of both worlds. It mixes both. And I think this is kind of the secret sauce that Helvy has going on for themselves because while the concave grind can oftentimes be way too thick, Helvy makes theirs very thin. And the benefit there is that they may they get it very thin like a flat grind blade uh, flat grind blade would be but they allow that thickness of the blade to get down closer to the cutting edge and that keeps the blade sharper for longer and you have less chips than you might with a flat grind now does this mean that you should stick to one grind versus the other no there are people that are pr predominantly using the scandi grind over anything else. I know Charles Banks makes absolutely amazing, mind-blowing artwork. I'm in love with everything that he makes. And he's using a Mora knife, you know, with a Scandi grind. And I, I see people using flat grind knives that are making absolutely beautiful, amazing stuff that I love and that I want to have on my shelf. And they're doing fantastic. People are using healthy knives to do the same thing. What knife you use, whatever knife you use, as long as it's sharp, you're going to get used to it. You're going to get accustomed to it and you're going to make great stuff. Now, when it comes to the argument of upsweep blade versus straight blade on which one's best and which one's better, which one cuts easier, that is enough of a, oh my goodness gracious, enough of a bear. I might do a video just on that conversation because that will take a while to unpack. Although I will say that uh, <clears throat> the benefit of having a, a upsweep blade is that it 
the geometry of the blade does allow it to cut more efficiently than a straight blade does. And as I get older, I think that I may gravitate towards an upsweep blade because as my hands lose strength, having that upsweep blade and having to use less pressure to do the same cut might be really beneficial to me. It might be something that I want to consider. So I'll say that. So let's take a look at the knives that I've got real fast and we'll go over those as well. Our flex cut and flex cut are fantastic knives. Now <clears throat> they have a scandy grind, which makes them very easy to sharpen but it also gives them a little bit of a thicker spine. These do not have as thick of a spine as say a Mora style knife or a Beavercraft knife, which makes them great starting knives. If you're only gonna get one knife, I highly suggest getting a flex cut detail knife. This is a flex cut rough out and this is a medium uh, uh, detail knife or medium flex cut knife. I don't have my detail knife. I don't know where I set it at right now, otherwise I'd include that one in the video as well. But I bought the set of three originally. And that was immediately after I figured out that I couldn't keep my uh, beaver craft very strop very well. And that was because the difficulties that I had with the Sloyd style knife was sharpening. But these flex cut knives were easy to sharpen with that Scandi grind. It was easy to index exactly where that grind was and get done. So I highly suggest if you're only going to get one, one knife, make it a flex cut knife. That is absolutely a great place to start. And if you're going to get into this hobby at all these are not going to be the only knives you get this is going to be one step on your journey it's going to be a great step because it's going to get you used to sharpening knives used to dropping knives and accustomed to it and then you can move on to bigger and better things right so another knife to show you are OCC tools these are the two OCC tool knives I have these are fantastic knives um, OCC stands for Ozark County Craft Tools and these have a walnut style handle a flat grind and a flat cutting edge. And I love how easy they are to sharpen with that flat grind. They have nice thin blade profiles, absolutely fantastic. And uh, this one here, I've done a little carving on that edge to taper it in because I preferred that. And I ground that back in a little bit. But as you can see, they come with a lot of tool marks on them. That's not a problem at all. And I have used this detail knife so much, I have stropped most of those carving marks off through the years of owning this knife. Just an absolutely solid knife, absolutely great knife. OCC tools are definitely highly suggested and uh, I've quite enjoyed them. So flat, like I said, flat grind, very thin blade profiles. I mean, far thinner than say a Mora knife, right? Which is much thicker or the flex cut knives compared to a flex cut, it's pretty close. So OCC tools are probably the, the they're, they're, they're entry level, they're, they're pretty cheap. They're easy to get a hold of, maybe 26, 20, $27 a piece. They're under 30 bucks and a flex cut is about 30 bucks. So flex cuts have those, uh, the Scandi grind, these are flat grind. So those are definitely options for you. Another knife to talk about are the Beavercraft Oh, not Beavercraft, the Badger State Blades. Definitely don't want to confuse these because Beavercraft are crap and Badger State are not. These are fantastic knives. And this is a mostly flat grind. It's slightly convex. I, uh, I love the way these work. This is a one and a half inch detail knife. It's easy to strop. And just like the OCC tool knives, you can see there's a little bit of tool marks in it. And as I use it, those are going to go away as I strop the knife, but they don't affect the carving in any way, shape or form whatsoever. It comes amazingly sharp and it's a great blade i like the handle on it i don't mind square handles a lot of folks don't like that but if you'll notice on the occ tool knife one of the first things i did was i carved away that hard edge in the front and they've already got that done the badge day blade so i really enjoy that about the handle the fact that they, they carve that in they bring that tapered in towards the knife blade i enjoy that um, when it comes to handles handle types are very very personal in nature. I prefer a meatier handle, a thicker handle, and this is a good handle. It's not quite as thick as I want. If I had my ways, I would go with this ash and ax style handle, right? This is a, this is a chip carving knife, which I don't use that much. It's a Scandi grind, small blade, very thick on the uh, spine, but ash and ax, I love their handles so much. This big, thick, chunky, meaty handle is absolutely fantastic. I mean, there's nothing better than this handle. And if I could have every knife 
have a big old wide tail on it like that. But most knives, like look, look at the size of that compared to a Helvy, right? I want this here to be bigger. I want that Ash and Axe knife to have a bigger handle than it does because I want it to be even more meaty. If it came out, I don't know, another half an inch, that'd probably be uh, the best I could get. I'd probably be really happy with that. Okay. Lee Ferguson, you, if you've seen the channel before, you've probably seen this knife once already when I unboxed it. This is another knife that you can get. Um, I like Lee Ferguson knives. They're flat grind as well. And this is a very thin detail knife. And I've been using it to great effect. It is absolutely a great knife. It is a very thin blade profile. Very thin. Flat grind, making it easy to maintain. And a very sharp tip. And the handle is thinner, but for a smaller blade, it's not bad. I don't mind it as much. So that's the Lee Ferguson knife. Now, the knives I own the most of are probably... <coughs> Beckwith Forge. Ben Beckwith is a knife maker over on Instagram and he makes knives in his own forge and I have bought quite a few from him. Now I have an upsweep blade here. It's fantastic for detail work. It's got a thicker handle. I had to make this one special for me and I love that bigger wider handle in my hands. It's just absolutely great and that upsweep blade is nice because you can get these curving cuts in much easier with an upsweep blade than you can with a flat blade. So that has, a, has its place. This flat blade here I got from him, this is a completely flat grind. It's a thicker spine, a completely flat grind. And while it doesn't do those curves as well, it will bite in and provide those straight cuts very easy, easy to, to strop because of that flat grind. And just, uh, I love that. But he doesn't just do that because the most used knife I have is this rough out knife I got from him. And this is a convex blade, right? So of the knives I got from him, I've got upsweep blades, flat grinds, convex grinds. He'll do anything, but uh, this blade is the most used blade I have. And the knife handle didn't have the shape to start with. I put this indention in here for my finger. I put that wrap on there. And I put those matte marks on the back of the blade as well before, to indicate where the spine is for me. Because I swap back and forth between upsweep blades and straight blades so often, I have those marks on there to help me index the knife more quickly so I don't make a mistake. Take a look at these two knives, right? Here's the reason for it. With these two knives, they are very similar in size and shape and color. But the cutting edge on both of them is on this side, okay? On the left side over here. The cutting edge on this one, the straight blade, is right here. And the cutting edge on this upsweep knife is right here. If I'm not paying attention and I grab this knife thinking that it's my straight knife, I'll put my thumb here and that's the cutting edge keep myself from doing that or grabbing this one thinking it's an upsweep and then putting my knife here my, my, my thumb here I'm going to cut my thumb so to keep myself from making that mistake with these blades I put those hash marks in right there in the back to help myself index where the spine of the knife is more quickly and I got so accustomed to that that I did it to other knives <laughs> because I just liked it so you do you you do how you like right so to talk about the ones that were out of the ordinary from Ben that I have, right? This one he made, and it's a, a goat hoofs knife. It's great for detail work, for getting in around things that might be difficult to get in around. I like specialty knives. I like knives that might have only one or two uses. And uh, this is a great chip carving knife as well. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. If you do much chip carving, this is a good knife. If you don't do any chip carving, you might not get that much use out of it. This knife I had him make for me. Um, it's an upsweep blade on a on a on a on a bit of an arm right there, and I use that for for uh, for rough outs that I'm doing, for getting into cracks and crevices, getting up in underneath a chin, and getting a sweeping cut up underneath something, or in in underneath arms, or underneath a beard, or in in places that are hard to get to. This blade can get to and 
do nice sweeping cuts in there and uh yeah so it's a it's a good blade and i love that big meaty handle um, it gets wider as it comes down and it gets thicker as it comes down too so i love that about that now this is a convex grind on this one as well and it's an upsweep so it is the dickens to strop properly but uh once you do it is i can just shave off little bits of skin right there because it's sharp enough to do that it's a fantastic knife so i love that one as well now helvy knives let's talk about helvy because i have some helvy knives as well i've got these two helvies so i did only have recently just the one helvy um just this one here a rough out and then a friend of mine charlie went to the cca event in uh, carving the rockies out in colorado and I'll say thank you again. Charlie purchased this knife for me while he was there. And uh, I sent him money for it and he mailed me the knife because he happened to be attending and I wasn't. So, Charlie, I really appreciate that again. If you're watching, thank you very much. This is a Helvy detail knife. And it is an inch and a quarter uh, knife. I believe it's an inch and a quarter. Let's double check that real quick. Yep, that is an inch and a quarter. Okay, so an inch and a quarter detail knife. Now, on all of rich smithland's knives they are all convex knives except for i believe the mini detail i believe the mini detail is the only flat grind knife that he has but because these convex knives uh work the way that convex knives work i believe that's kind of the secret sauce of what makes healthy so successful because they are thin blades and they are thinner than the occ tools knives so this is the occ tool right and they are thinner than the flex cut knives <clears throat> they are they are some of the thinner knives that i have but the beauty of that convex blade style is that they get more strength and more durability down into the blade into the cutting edge and so they they stay sharper longer and they have fewer problems and fewer nicks and chips with my occ tool knives i use those often i use them a lot but over time, those black rinds, they get more chips in them and they get uh, duller faster than these convex knives do. So these convex knives are definitely an upgrade, but they are harder to maintain. So these are some of the things I would think about Look when I'm looking to get knives, right? If you can get a knife that's a convex knife. Like I said, my most used knife right now is probably this rough out here that I have from Ben Beckwith. It is just like these Helvy knives. It is a convex knife, and it is a relatively thin blade. It is slightly thicker than Helvy's rough out, but not by much. It's a little bit longer, and uh, it's just become my favorite blade because of the thicker handle. And the only thing I wanted to do was put this little bit of an indentation right there, right? I would probably be using this Helvy knife more if the handle was a little bit different, but uh, it's such a beautiful handle that I didn't want to damage it or change it and with this knife here from from ben i just thought you know what i love this blade so much i'm gonna make this handle my own because i'm never gonna let this go this this knife is never gonna leave me it's never gonna go to anyone else um i will stab you if you come for my knife i'll stab you with this knife if you come for this knife you leave me and my knife alone this is my baby i, I haven't named it yet but i'm going to name it <laughs> all righty another knife i haven't mentioned yet is this knife by Frank Pamies, right? This is a detail knife that I got from him. And it's, he makes great knives too. And they are, I think this is a flat grind. It's a bit of a convex grind as well. It's a very thin blade. This is probably the thinnest blade I have. I mean, check it compared to the Helvy Detail Blade. I mean, they are right there on par with one another. And that is absolutely fantastic. So uh, Frank Pamies makes knives as the Flatulent Retriever Workshop on Instagram and on Facebook. And he makes great knives. This this handle I like. Uh, I ordered this specifically with this type of handle. I like this a little bit thinner at the top and wider as it goes down. That gives it something to grip to for me. So I like that. And I believe this is a flat grind. It might be slightly convex. If it is, it really helps to maintain that edge. You can see the, uh, the tip of the knife here. I chipped that out. That is on me. I, would, I started using this knife for more than I should have for quite a while. I was doing even larger stuff. I didn't want to set it down. So I abused it a bit and I need to repair it now and repair that tip. But uh, that's going to be a project for later. 
So that was my go-to detail knife for the longest time until I chipped the edge of it. Ed edge of it and this rough out knife here from Ben Beckwith was my go-to for uh, rough out knives. Takeaway is this. For those wanting to know what my favorite knife is, it's this one by Ben Beckwith. It is a convex blade, straight cutting edge, and it is about, I think, an inch and seven eighths in length. Just double check here. Yep, inch and seven eighths in length, right? Why is this my favorite knife? Because of the thickness of the handle and the convex blade. I like something as close to two inches for a rough out knife. That is absolutely fantastic. The convex blade means it holds its edge longer. It's a thin blade, almost as thin as a Helvy, which is why it's comparative to a Helvy. And uh, I love the handle and the way the handle feels. I've made it my own. That's why it's my favorite knife. But the reason Helvies are so popular, like I said, they are popular for a reason. That thin blade, the convex style there, they've got a lot of things going for them, and they're just fantastic. The different style, styles of handle that Helvy offers, because they offer a lot of different styles of handles, are absolutely astonishing. They, they allow them to fit to anyone's hand. My favorite style of handle for them is the Floyd Radigan. It's a lot like what I've done to this Ben Beckwith knife, right? It's got that indentation right there and a wider back end. So that Floyd Radigan style handle is very similar. It's a little bit too thin at the top. If it was a little bit thicker like that, it would just be perfect for me. But that's why Helvy is probably the top of their game. Other great knife manufacturers you should look into, like I said, Flash Hilton Retriever Workshop, Batter State Blades, OCC Tools. Outside of, of course, uh, Ben Beckwith, if you want to get some of those knives, head over to Instagram and you can check him out. Links to these knife manufacturers will be in the doobly-doo down below, so take a look at that. Um, and other than that, I think that the takeaway here is this. Knives need to be sharp. A good sharp knife is all you need to carve. Whatever kind of knife you get, even if it's just a flex cut knife, as long as it is a sharp knife, you are going to carve. Look at this, right? You are going to carve and you're going to create cool things with that knife. You just need to have a sharp knife. So it doesn't matter what knife you get to, sharp, to start with. Take a look at this video. Take a look at what knife grinds, style of blades, style of handles that you like. These flex cut handles, I don't like the way they're shaped. They're thick up here at the top. They're thinner at the bottom. I want to have something that's thicker out here at the base and thinner at the top, kind of reverse of what they got going on. But for some folks, these style handles are perfect. They love that. So those are the takeaways, right? A sharp knife is all you need. Whatever style of knife you have, you will get used to it, accustomed to it, and you will learn how to carve with it well. You just have to spend time with it. Hey, if you want to help the channel out and get something in return, you can head over to Etsy and get one of these carving stickers of different varieties. You can put one on your water bottle, your tool tote, your carving space, wherever you want to put a sticker at. If you want to help out, you can. If you don't want to help out, don't even worry about it. <laughs> this is my carving sticker. That one's funny to me. At any rate, thanks so much. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and then watch one of these other videos on the channel, like that one right there. That video is perfect for you. Watch that one.